This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Of all the the lineup of grifters and liars and charlatans and people who uh, so easily change their political identity, so quickly change their political identity, Tulsi Gabbard is uh, a thing for the record books. She is a vile, sinister bigot, an anti-gay champion for the right. She's a, she's a, a traitor to her party. And as far as I'm concerned, a traitor to her uniform. She is a, she's a, a lieutenant colonel, not a full bird colonel, but a, a light colonel in the United States Army, in the, in the, in the, the, the Army National Guard, in command of troops, ostensibly. I don't know exactly what unit she, she's in or heads, but she is certainly has many subordinates to her because of her rank. And as a member of the United States Army National Guard, you would think she would have some deference to the allies of the United States. More notably, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And I don't know whether to go through, I tell you what, I won't go through the details here for, uh, first. I, I'll play the clip of her on Fox News because that's where she goes. Remember, this is a woman who ran for president of the United States as a Democrat in 2020, as a Democrat. And now, she was guest hosting for Tucker Carlson, the white nationalist puke. She is not a, a, you cannot take her at face value. She is absolutely one of the worst. And here she is, I don't know how she maintains her, her status as a lieutenant colonel in the, in the United States military, while, um, turning her back on our allies and treaties that under our constitution, our law, the process for signing a treaty isn't just that a president agrees and, assign, and signs it. There's a, an entire uh, constitutional process that involves Congress as well. First, we'll watch the clip. Then we will talk about the things that she's wrong about and how she is absolutely uh, derelict in her duties as a member of the United States military. Now, with NATO, he is forcing the American people and NATO members to be confronted with some very serious and important questions. For us, what is the role of NATO? Does our membership in NATO serve our national security interests? And if it does, then how much are we, the American people, willing to put on the line in our taxpayer dollars and in American lives? And how much are these NATO members willing to put on the line in their money and the lives of their citizens? We cannot allow ourselves, the United States of America and the American people, to continue to be in this position where these NATO members expect us to put up our money. They expect us to put up the lives of my brothers and sisters in uniform to protect them when they're not even willing to do that for themselves. First of all, Tulse, how about you shut the up about your brothers and sisters in uniform as though you hold any allegiance to them while you are a puppet, a, 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 a regurgitator of Russian propaganda, uh, besmirching NATO, its mission, and the history of the organization and the treaty that has protected many nations. You're pathetic. Secondly, the Chiron, Europe, is riding free on U.S. taxpayers because of NATO. They act like there's some common pot that we all put our money in for defense, and that's how NATO operates. Fox News and, and, and these, these hosts that they have, they know how it works, that there is an agreement that each NATO nation will pay a certain percentage of their GDP toward defense. That's how it works. Just because we spend more than the next 10 nations combined on our defense, and many of those 10 nations are allies of ours, doesn't mean that's normal or correct. We could spend 50% less. We spend nearly, nearly a trillion dollars every single year on our defense in peacetime. Peacetime. And as far as her 
insane assertion that NATO members aren't willing to put their lives, their troops on the line for us, but we're willing to do it for them. Come with receipts or again, shut the f- up. Because Article 5, I will read it, has only been invoked one time in the history of the existence of NATO, and that was after 9-11. When NATO troops came to the call, they answered the call to step in the, in, into the void and the gap for an ally, for a friend, the United States, after we were attacked. Here's what Article 5 says of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The parties agree, and this has been signed, this has been agreed to through the the different constitutional processes within each NATO nation. A Congress has agreed to this. A president agreed to this. The parties agree that an armed attack against one or more of them in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all. And consequently, they agree that if such an armed attack occurs, each of them, in exercise of the right of individual or collective self-defense recognized by Article 51 of the Charter of the United Nations will assist the party or parties so attacked by taking forthwith individually and in concert with the other parties such action as it deems necessary, including the use of armed force to restore and maintain the security of the North Atlantic area. Any such armed attack and all measures taken as a result thereof shall immediately be reported to the Security Council. Such measures shall be terminated when the Security Council has taken measures necessary to restore and maintain international peace and security. This has only happened one time. One time. On on the evening of 12 September 2001, less than 24 hours after the attacks on 9-11, the Allies invoked the principle of Article 5. Then NATO Secretary General Lord Robertson subsequently informed the Secretary General of the United Nations of the Alliance's decision. So who is it that not, that's not willing to put their dollars and their lives on the line for their friends, for their allies? Tulsi Gabbard? Who is it? Again, it is an absolutely ahistorical take on the reality of our world and our existence. It's not woke history, as I read from a Fox News commenter yesterday in a video. It is history. It is fact. So for her to malign an ally while being someone who is not on active duty, she's a reservist or an Army National Guard, It is disgraceful. If this woman is in charge of troops, that is disgraceful. What kind of ethos is she laying down? What kind of example is she setting for those young soldiers under her command? She is a partisan hack, a liar, and a propagandist for our enemies while serving in uniform of the United States. What do you think? I invite your participation in this conversation. You can comment below. That would be great. It'll help the algorithm to to recommend this channel and my content to new viewers. That would be a great support. Very helpful. You can also call. Leave me uh, a voicemail or an email. 714-576-4054. Of course, that email, as always, is daily at dollamore.com. Please consider supporting this work. Uh, The main way you can support is to make sure that if you're not subscribed, that you're subscribed. You can also give here on YouTube, click the join button, become a channel member for two bucks a month. Uh, Patreon.com slash I doubt a podcast is a great way. And uh, follow me on social media if that's your thing. I'm at Dollamore. Anyway, uh, she is a perplexing individual. Um, Not to toot my own horn, but toot my own horn. I always had her number. Even when she was popular in liberal and progressive circles, I had her number, liar, grifter, con artist, bigot. Maybe most importantly, she's a vile bigot. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Be genuine. Take care of one another.